Thank you very much. And thanks a lot for the organizers for inviting me for such an wonderful conference. And so I'm actually from the PDE world, and it's also uh, due to Franco that I'm actually in this, uh, partially in this SPDE world. Um, and I wanted to report something on uh, a joint project with um, Franco, with Max, and with Mario that finally came to an end. So it was started like many years ago, and it's now uh, going to appear on the Electronic Journal of Probability. Uh, so the plan of the talk is to first explain some facts about the deterministic equation. So I first uh, recall that solutions are represented by characteristics. If you have a very uh, regular problem, so in particular if the, the, the thing that we call drift is uh, at least if it's continuous, then I will use that to explain you uh, how uh, or why an infinity weak solution exists and what these actually are. And then if the drift is again a little bit more regular, then I can also explain something about uniqueness. And in particular, also give an alternative approach which works by a reality approach. So we use a dual equation and regularity of the solution of the dual equation to get some uh, uniqueness for the transport equation. And um, then I will show you some examples that in the case that the drift is non-regular, so only while it continues, for example, that the uh, solution might blow up or that it might be non-unique. And so the deterministic picture for a very uh, easy transport noise is just that you have one figure at time t is equal to zero, and this is just uh, shifted in time uh, like this one here. In the second part, I will uh, introduce a stochastic perturbation of the transport equation by some multiplicative noise. Uh, explain you basically or a lot about some integrability condition that we will put on the uh, drift term and which will have the effect or which will allow for an effect of regularization. Um, so in particular we will have uh, some sobel of regularity and we will have uniqueness which comes by the effect of noise, so by the introduction of noise. And I also want to explain you basically how it's proved, and as I'm from the PDE uh, world, so it will be by means of PDE techniques. Even so, I will also mention how you can uh, do it by uh, more stochastic means, by some, somehow these uh, characteristics, which are then interpreted as some stochastic flow. Okay, so first part. So what is the equation that we consider? And so we also have here some color perturbation, so this is actually a very nice yellow, not some brownish here, and so um, we consider a transport equation, so it's a very simple linear uh, PDE of first order, so we have the time derivative which is coupled to the space uh, derivative via this drift term, so this P is always called drift, and we start from some initial condition which is U0, and this U just models the uh, evolution of some particle density. And in the uh, very regular setting, we can construct cl classical solutions by some uh, method of characteristic, which basically means that we can we need to solve a family of ordinary differential equations to get uh, the solution of the partial differential equation. And there's a general strategy behind, but let me just mention that basically for the transport equation, which is linear, everything is very simple, and it means that you have the so here, for, just for, for you, for reminder, so this is a transport equation, and you consider some ODE equation, which is a path which starts from some uh, point x in RD, and so this is exactly what is uh, modeling the family. So we do it for each x, and then we solve the ODE, or we just uh, have the, the derivative of x, okay, in t, uh, as given by this p evaluated at t and this path x. And so if we assume that we have Lipschitz regularity in space, so in the second variable here and some continuity in the first, then we can have uh, ODE techniques and uh, Piga Lindelof, which tells us that we have a unique solution for each of the axes. And what is actually uh, the case is that you can uh, define a flow, and now the interpretations that we for fixed t, so this maps Rd to Rd in an objective way and uh, uniquely, and so this defines then the flow. And so if we uh, sit in one x, then we can just uh, look at the path how this phi creates, and the other way around, if we fix t, then we can look at uh, how the points in Rd are transformed. So once you have such a solution, then what, so how do we get back the solution of the transport equation? So we just uh, go the other way around. We assume 
uh, we have the flow, so we have the regular drift such that we have the flow, and we assume that we have a regular a classical solution, uh, u, so it solves that equation, and then we look at the solution, which is evaluated in the second component in the flow. And then we uh, calculate the derivative in time, so here we have to apply the, uh, so we take the derivative in the first component or in the second component and apply chain rule, and this gives back exactly this equation here, where in the point x which is evaluated, it's just in the flow, in the flow point. And so this is just equal to zero, so this function is constant in time t. And so this means that for each t, we can, it's the same value as in the point t is equal to zero. In the point t is equal to zero, our fl flow started from the point x, and so as u is the, the initial value was u naught, so this is just constantly given by u naught. And so we have a, a representation of the solution, and since this phi was projective, we can just invert it and get back a representation formula of the solution. So this u given by the initial value uh, evaluated in, along the flow will now be our solution, so the solution formula. And so we have uniqueness, we have this representation formula, and we immediately see that there is, for example, no effect of regularization. So in case that u naught is not very good, we cannot expect that we have, for example, uh, C infinity after waiting a little bit. And so, um, so the, going back to the simplest example, when we have a constant drift, so what is the flow? So then the flow is here just uh, with, with a constant, so it, mo it moves from x, uh, with uh, velocity b, so the flow is just x plus bt, then we have to invert it, put it back here, and so our solution would then just be the u naught shifted by this vector uh, minus bt. And so this was exactly the first picture. Now, these are uh, classical solutions, but we want to work in a setting where actually the b is much less regular. And so then we have the concept of weak solutions, and there are uh, many of them depending on what initial conditions or what uh, regularity you would impose on the drift term. And the, the minimal regularity you can put is that the b and the divergence of b are L1 functions. And in that case, we can define L infinity with solutions as functions in L infinity, uh, which solve the equation in a weak sense. And the only thing we do, uh, maybe we go back where the derivative of uh, u was written. So here's the derivative of u, but we don't want to ask uh, derivatives on the u. So we now multiply this here by a smooth test function, and then we do partial integration to have this derivative here as a divergence on the test functions times the drift. So and this is exactly what is written here inside. So here is the initial value. The function does not depend on time, so there is no additional time derivative on the test function. And here is the du, which was now uh, integrated by parts uh, that the divergence appear here uh, for the uh, drift times the uh, test function. And so we could do something similar. We could also say something is in L theta Lm, or it has maybe some weak derivatives. Um, but the problem is then that we cannot prove the existence. And so, for this notion of L infinity weak solution, we can have, uh, or we can prove the existence of solutions. And how this is done is, uh, so we take exactly the assumptions where we can define uh, this L infinity weak solutions. And um, what we do is, we use the classical solutions, but to a regularized problem. So what we do is, we regularize the drift, that is in particular this continuous in time, Lipschitz in the second variable, and then we write down exactly this equation, and we also regularize the um, initial condition u naught. And so we have this problem, which now uh, has a solution, a classical solution, and the solution is represented by this uh, representation formula that u epsilon is given by the initial data, now the regular, regularized initial data, and then this flow. Oh, this was a capital phi, actually. So this is now the, the, the flow, and which means that we have an L infinity bound on the solution, on this solution u epsilon, because we just take the L infinity bound of this one here, and the regularization here doesn't uh, increase the L infinity norm. And once we know that for all times and all epsilon we have this bound, we can use we, we start compactness in L infinity and extract a subsequence uh, of u epsilon which converges in the weak star limit to some L infinity function. 
And now, um, if you look at this equation, we have uh, B epsilon is converging strongly, this one is converging weakly, so we can uh, let the epsilon go to zero in the equation, and we arrive at uh, that the limit point is an L infinity weak solution of the original problem. So this is how existence of solution is proved, and then, of course, one is interested in uh, uniqueness, and now uh, the important point is that we have a uniqueness result where we need to ask much more on the drift term. So here we have B and divergence B is in L1, and if we uh, do uh, uniqueness, we will need basically L infinity instead of L1. So for uniqueness, first note that this one is linear in the uh, function U, so we, for uniqueness we only need to prove that once we start from initial value zero, then we remain zero for all times. And so if we now suppose that this divergence of B is in L1, L infinity, so instead of being only in L1, L1, and if B is in L1 and W11, then we have actually regularity. And this is, uh, was also proved in this paper by Dupin and Jans, and so if you replace here this W11 in, by BB, then this is uh, some result from the 2004. So how does this regularity here enter? So this one we will see for a second. Uh, the second condition allows for some renormalization principle. So where a, permutation, uh, a, a commutator lemma is proved, as was mentioned in one of the previous talks. And so this basically means that if you have some regular function and we have a solution and we convolve the solution with that function here, then it's again an L infinity weak solution. So we have a conservation of um, the solution property. And so what does it mean for the transport equation? For example, if you have uh, beta is the, the square function, then if u solves the transport equation now with initial values u0, we want to prove that u remains zero all the time. And now by renormalization, we know that u square also solves the uh, transport equation and still with in initial value zero. So then we need some Eligibility condition to make everything rigorous, but the main idea is that we um, now have the solution property where the u naught disappears, and so we have only this term here. So one is the u squared evaluated at the time t, and then we have everything which comes from the transport term b times du, which was here uh, integrated for parts. And now u is replaced by this u squared. And now, um, so we want to let this phi go to uh, identity, then we have basically this first inequality here, and now we can take advantage of this condition that the divergence uh, at, at each at time t belongs into L infinity. So, which allows to have this term here moved out from the uh, space integral, and then we have this condition here, and now we have this integral in space reappearing here inside this integral. So it's exactly a setting where you can apply the one lemma, and as we started from zero, our solution remains zero all the time. And now this is exactly where this second condition here enters, but there is a huge wall between the two uh, results, between existence, where we only needed, let's say, L1 uh, integrability on the drift and on the divergence of uh, the drift, and here we, we need that the divergence of the drift actually belongs to um, an infinity roughly. Okay, now this was uh, like the first approach that we have <coughs> regularity of the drift, which ended exactly in this onward type uh, argument. But there is a second uh, strategy, how to prove uniqueness, which uh, goes via the uh, dual equation. And so we have the transport equation, which is that equation. And uh, we can write down the dual equation to the transport equation, which is this uh, continuity equation. And formally, it's, it's, uh, you test the transport equation with a test function, then you use the integration by parts, and you exchange more or less the roles between uh, the test function and the solution. And so you come up here with these two terms, which come from the term that you take the divergence of B times the test function or the dual solution. So this is why here two terms uh, appear. And now, how do you really see that this is dual and how you can use it? So um, now, um, the transport equation is now tested against the test function, which also depends on time. So this is basically the same, but just 
Um, and so we have, uh, from the weak formulation, we have this identity here, which means, okay, we see again the initial value, then because now the test function also depends on time, so the time uh, derivative of the test function appears, and then we have these two terms here, so which just come from the uh, integration by parts from the uh, du part. And now we uh, look carefully at this part here, which is actually exactly this equation here, when uh, this, this phi would be equal to this v. And so, in case that our solution to the continuity equa equation is regular enough to be used, that it can be used as a test function, this all term here would disappear. And so, let's assume that we have a regular solution which Okay, maybe it belongs to that space, but by density you can uh, assume it a little bit less. And so then all this term here would disappear. And now we have integrated here up to some time t. And now if we fix final values at time t, so we solve the equation backwards, we fix uh, the final values and we prescribe the values in a sufficiently large space, then it means that if we start from zero, this first term here disappears, that term here disappeared by choice of the test function, and so <coughs> this first part here will uh, dis disappear. And then so if this v is now in a sufficiently large class of functions, then this just is the fundamental lemma of the calculus of variations, which tells that actually u is equal to zero at that given time. And we can this do this, of course, for every time, so it means that we started from zero and we remained zero for all times, and it didn't use any um, any property of the um, regularity property of the drift, which is in, in this L infinity space so far. But we have used regularity of um, of the solution, and usually regularity of the solution is connected to regularity of the drift. In that sense, it, it implicitly enters again in the world. Okay, so now what happens if the drift is, is really within this regime between existence and uniqueness? So there are examples that we can have low up of solutions and we can have uh, non-uniqueness of solutions. Did I already take, talk 20 minutes? No. Yes. Yes? No. Okay. Okay, fine. Um, so the first example is that the drift term is this uh, signum of x times uh, the square root of the modulus of x, which is actually here drawn on that picture here. So that for the characteristics, we have to solve that uh, ODE, which means that if we start, for example, from a positive value, then our function is increasing all the time, which would mean, for example, we are here in a positive value and then it, uh, it is growing. Instead, if we start from a ne negative value, then it's decreasing all the time. And the only um, possibility that we do not have a unique solution is when we start in X, where we can wait some <coughs> arbitrary time, and then we can either go up or down with exactly uh, this drift term. And so we have non-uniqueness of characteristic, which translates to the transport equation that we get non-uniqueness uh, of weak solutions if, so, if something with the zero is contained. So in the opposite direction, we can choose uh, just a different sign here, which means that basically you go the other way around. So you start from a positive value, and then you decrease all the time up to zero, or you start from a pos uh, negative value, then you increase up to zero. And here you see that there is a meeting point. So basically, if you start from, for example, x or minus x, then they will meet for some time t. And so if you have uh, prescribed different um, initial conditions for x and minus x, for example, or if there's one point where you have different conditions prescribed, then there will be a blow up. So there will be no uh, weak differentiability. So in that sense, uh, so we have seemingly very nice uh, drift terms, but still uh, we have blow up in time and non uniqueness And in the second part of the talk, I will explain how exactly these two phenomena will disappear once we add a stupid suitable type of noise to the transport equation. And so what is this type of noise, so this, which has also already disappeared? So we take our transport equation, and the noisy version is just that we take multiplicative noise with some 
sigma in front, which just means that if sigma is equal to zero, then it's the deterministic equation. If sigma, for example, is equal to one, then it's the noisy equation. And the, uh, the noise depends on the gradient of u, which is the thing that might potentially be split. And um, so here this is, again, Stratonovich uh, stochastic integral interpretation. And now we want to ask as little on the drift term as possible. And this will be some condition which is actually only integrability in space and time. And so we aim at proving something for some LQ integrability in time and LP in space. And so uh, we cannot um, work anymore, or we cannot write down anymore a big derivative in our weak formulation. So this is now why we uh, work with weak, weak solutions, which are of class L theta W1M. So we need to ask now for some, some time uh, space derivative because so some space derivative was appearing in the uh, equation. And we just do it in such a way that um, uh, the integration against this drift of the DU will make sense. So this is only why there is some, some condition on this. And now as we are stochastic, we have to uh, ask some measurability properties, some similar same Martin Gall properties and how this uh, theta w one m angle is that with, prob with probability one, our solution or our process u evaluated at omega will always belong to that space L theta w one m, and then we need some again weak formulation, um, so which is again test against a function which belongs to uh, smooth compactly supported functions and with probability. Probability one, we have this identity. So here we can see the initial value, and now we just do not integrate by parts. So we just leave that term as it is. So which is this one here with a minus sign because it's put on the other side, and then we have here the the sigma, and here the test function is actually put this this d here is put on the test function. Otherwise, we would have the plus sign. Okay, so we have again uh, a concept of weak solutions. And now I want to convince you what kind of condition here uh, is, is needed to have existence of such solutions. And so which would not exist in the deterministic regime because we do, would not have any differentiability properties of our solution because there is no regularization effect. Okay, now what are analogies? So there were mentioned a few of them, so I also mentioned some of them without going too much into the details since we have seen some of it. So this was actually already mentioned, so we have an ODE, um, a, a linear ODE, and then there was something about stability of the zero, and basically if all um, the uh, real parts of the eigenvalues would, have, uh, would be negative, then uh, we would have stability, and this uh, result of Arnold Cohen Wistel would tell us that if you have a system which, so, where the uh, mean values and average, or uh, the uh, eigenvalues and average have uh, negative real part, um, then we can find a suitable Stratonovich noise which stabilizes the system so that everything is stable. Even so, the M must not. Uh, have only negative parts for the eigenvalues. So then there is also something for uh, reaction diffusion equations where we have a restoration of regularity in ball post nest if we are um, perturbed by some noise and here we have some nonlinearity and we need some integrability condition on F. But also this one here in the deterministic setting is not, uh, does not necessarily have regular solution or unique solutions but this can be restored. And then here also Flandre Gubinelli Priola. So this may be the first first paper in this uh, transport equation world. So they have exactly the multiplicative noise, and they have worked under the hypothesis that B is further continuous, just as in the two counter example given before. And they have uh, a restoration of well closeness by more or less looking at the stochastic flow and then uh, proving that this uh, deterministic techniques uh, extend to the stochastic case. So I will also a little bit mention more in that for that strategy of proof. Um, so then there was 2D Euler equation, which already has appeared. So from 2D Euler equation, you go to the vorticity, then you have the vorticity equation. And for the um, uh, deterministic uh, uh, regime, vortices can collide, and this does, uh, or this can happen for some initial conditions. 
And in case that you add some multiplicative noise, you can restore this well person in the sense that now for all initial configurations, you will not have um, coalescence of uh, this vortices. So then, this De La Rue Flandre Vincenzi paper is for the 1D class of Poisson equation, so which model somehow like electrons move, and they're in the deterministic regime, you can have that electron that they collide or, or collapse. And so if some noise is added, which has some space structure, so there was some X dependency uh, involved, then this collapse of the um, of this um, dynamics is, is prevented. And then finally, so, so everything here was with linear noise, and then there is uh, Benjamin has worked uh, with Souvenirs and some other papers on restoration reflects for conservation laws, and there is a nonlinear uh, noise which uh, restores the regularity in that case, and also for some other types of parabolic, uh, hyperbolic SPDs. Parabolic, hyperbolic. Okay, so now maybe that's about the analogies, but what is now our result, which says that for the stochastic transport equation, if you have this integrability condition on the drift, and now the important point is that the, pu the P and the Q in this integrability condition are coupled in such a way that the um, space dimension over P plus uh, Q over the time integrability uh, is less or equal to 1, and there are some other limit case, which is P is equal to infinity and Q is equal to 2, and then we can conserve basically <coughs> Sobolev regularity, meaning that if U belongs to every W1 R Sobolev space, then with probability 1 at each time, also the uh, our solution depends to uh, every Sobolev space. And um, so since later on we, all, we are also interested in the continuity equation where we have some lower order term of that type, so uh, it's not only for the transport equation, but we can also include lower order terms, something like c times u, and then we need the same integrability condition on the prefactor c here, even if there is no um, derivative in the u involved. And we can also iterate um, the whole thing, take the derivative in that equation, and then get, for example, w2 re conservation of w2 r regularity, meaning that in that case you would need to ask for uh, the integrability condition both on B and on the derivative of B. So and then you can iterate, of course, the whole thing. So what is uh, open is, so here is the intersection of all sort of spaces, and usually, so since it's transport, okay, the best we can hope for is conservation of regularity, so you could ask, okay, can we cancel out this intersection? Can we, for example, uh, deduce from W12 regularity of U0 that our solution has this W12 regularity, and this we do not know. So we basically we lose a factor of 2, which I will explain you in the proof where we will uh, lose it. So then, uh, what is, for example, in the way work of daily, there is something about C1 regularity, and usually you are interested in having a classical solution, so when do you have, uh, in almost every point, something like C1 regularity, and um, by uh, embedding, you can deduce it if you have W2 or regularity, but then you would need again some condition on the derivative of a feed, so this is maybe not the uh, thing we want. Um, but we do not have a direct proof which uh, shows that C1 regularity is preserved, because we somehow are forced to work with uh, full derivatives here. And what would be the most interesting but also most dif difficult problem? What is if the uh, drift is actually random? And we have no idea on that, so, so this, this does not, not apply. And that world we are using is explicitly that the B is a deterministic drift. So, some uh, further remarks. So, okay, the result is not true in the deterministic case when sigma is equal to zero, which means that it's really a phenomenon on regularization, which takes place because there is noise. Um, and then this integrability condition, so I will still say some more about this, but this one is also known from fluid dynamics from Navier-Stokes equation, and so this was um, also called before something like Lachinskaya Prodicerium condition, because they were uh, working on this first results in the Navier-Stokes uh, setting. 
And the proof, which I will uh, sketch uh, a little bit later on, is based on PDE estimates, and it's not using this uh, stochastic flow. Um, but now, let, let me point out a little bit why this Lyshenskaya producerian condition enters, and um, where this restriction here comes from, and why we believe that this is actually the um, optimal or the best result that we can achieve. So, um, I take a solution to the stochastic transport equation, and just for simplicity, I will uh, fix sigma is equal to zero. So then, uh, we are working with that uh, equation here. And now we uh, rescale functions. And for some reason, it will be, uh, become clear in, in, in the proof, we use uh, the parabolic, parabolic rescaling. And so we now in introduce, so we take our solution and we introduce a function u lambda, which is the u evaluated lam lambda square t and lambda x. So this is the parabolic rescaling. And then we look, okay, now what kind of equation does this u lambda satisfy? So we calculate what is the time derivative of this lambda, so their de facto lambda square appears here in front, and we calculate the uh, space derivative of this lambda, so then one factor of lambda uh, appears, and then the third thing, so then there is still the drift that we somehow need to change a little bit in the Brownian motion. So for the Brownian motion, we want to have the same scaling, and by uh, just uh, properties of the Brownian motion, we get in front the factor lambda of the minus one. So then we have the Brownian motion, and now we still need what is the uh, correct drift to use. So we just write down what is now the equation for the new lambda, and then we see that this term here replaces basically what the drift should be. So our B lambda is exactly this term here. And now we were working in this LQ, LP spaces, so we calculate now this LQ, LP norm of the new drift, of the rescaled drift. So this is exactly that one. And since we now need to uh, rescale in time and do this change also in, in X, so we end up with, okay, it's some, uh, just some calculations, we end up with a prefactor lambda to the exponent 1 minus D over T, minus 2 over q, which is exactly somehow uh, mi 1 minus the left-hand side here. Uh, now usually then you look at the limits, lambda is, equal, uh, lambda is going to 0, and so then this will go to 0 once we have the strict inequality in our condition, and um, if we have equality then at least it, it remains bounded. And for that reason, so in the first case where the, the, this prefactor will push everything down to zero, we call this the subcritical setting, which should be somehow easier. And then uh, the critical setting uh, is, is, is uh, the uh, identity in this condition here. And so this is basically the motivation why we believe that the result is optimal. So now we were not the first one uh, to prove such a result, and so there is an alternative strategy. Um, of proof for the regularization phenomenon, and that works under exactly this condition of subcriticality, which was also mentioned before. So this was the school of Kuhn of uh, condition, and um, so we here have strict inequality. And so then it was already pointed out that for the STE, which has now also the stochastic parts here, uh, we have um, passwise uniqueness of the flow, and then. Um, so in several words, so by Emil Fedrizzi and Frank Flandini, it was shown that this generates a stochastic flow, which is continuous, which is even better than continuous, so it's holder continuous with um, any holder exponent, and it also has some weak differentiability, which was shown in these two papers. And then having the stochastic flow, which is differentiable, then the representation formula basically makes sense, and you can deduce the regularization, so the Sobolev regularity, um, from the representation formula, basically. And so, if you take this kuhn of Wagner condition, then um, in this paper from 2013 of Ennio Felizzi and Franco Flandoli, and of uh, this second paper by Mohamed Nielsen and Proske, it was shown that we have actually the Sobolev regularity, but it's restricted to the kuhn of Wagner condition, which excludes the case, case of equality. And um, so now I'm going to explain you what is the alternative strategy with the PDE um, techniques. 
and somehow it's motivated from the very first slide where I proved um, the existence of L, um, of L infinity solutions, um, which was actually assumed that we have, or which was working by regularization and a priori estimates. So we can assume that basically everything is regular. And then in the end, we will need to go to the limit to get the, the result. So in that sense, I have formal estimates which use all the derivatives, even though they do not exist. But in the end, we want to have one a priori estimate where no derivative of the drift term is involved. So the basic goal is uh, to avoid that the derivative of the drift term will appear. And so um, it's a number of steps, and uh, I hope that it's uh, understandable. So the first step is that we use a variant of renormalization principle. Renormalization principle meant that we can uh, like change a solution by taking, for example, the square and show that it also has a solution property. We use a variant because we show that it still has a solution property of an equation which is basically the same, but it, which is not precisely the same, but which is of the same type. So uh, the first line is just the stochastic transport equation, nothing changed, and now we will we want to prove something on Sobolev regularity, so we want to prove some estimate on the first derivative. So this is why, for shortness, I introduced such a notation that Vi uh, denotes the derivative in i direction of our solution, and this is the object we are interested in. And so here I first take the derivative of this equation here in the i direction, which means that I have to use the product rule for the derivative here, so which creates these two terms. And now our Brownian motion does not depend on x or sigma, it's a constant, so the, the noise term is of the same type, only the drift term has an additional ingredient. So then um, I now take tuples of, um, or products of this vi vk. So now I have the, uh, everything is in the Stratonovic setting, so I don't need to take care of each formula and so on. So I can just um, use the general rules of calculus and take the equation for the vi, I take the equation for the vk, and I get the equation for the product vi and vk, which means basically um, multiply this d v by the vk and add the uh, equation for the vk multiply with v a, vi, so which then uh, leads to that equation where we have these two terms uh, from here. So one thing is important, so here is the full derivative, or here is the full vector v, which contains all the der derivative, because this comes from this du, which is actually the v in our notation. And in particular, we can do it for v i squared. And this will be the, the um, ingredient that will be the most important for us. <coughs> So then we have some equation for the vi squared, and so we have some derivative for the vi appearing. So here's still the derivative of the drift that we want to avoid in the end. And now here's the drift term, which is again a derivative of the quantity that we are interested in. So this is the renormalization. Apart from the fact that we have this, this term here that we still need to get under control. So now that we have done all the, uh, all the computations, we want to go to E2 because then we need martingale properties and we want to take the expected values. Okay, so we <coughs> need to convert that one here into Stratonovich, uh, into E2 integral. And so um, we take the derivative here to see what is actually the, uh, the stochastic term appearing. And so uh, we change, so we leave all the terms here, change this Stratonovich to the e to integral, and then uh, the correction term is exactly that term here, which is the Laplacian. So formally it makes none of the equation something parabolic, even though the equation itself is not parabolic. And at that stage now we can take the expected value, which means that this integral will disappear and we will work with a parabolic equation. So take the expected values, and now, again, sorry, it's a new notation. So the wik is now the expected, expected value of vi vk. And so taking the expected value here, we get the wii, and of this, or first this one, this here is the wii, so we have the Laplacian, which is this diffusive equation which makes everything parabolic and nice. 
and then we have still B times C W I, and here we have all the mixed terms because this one is a B I, and here is the whole vector of the these. So this is why here now the uh, scalar product is now changed into, into uh, some notation that we uh, see W I I K reappearing here. And now the um, the advantage is that this is a parabolic equation, but still there is a derivative of the drift uh, present, which is that term. But we have one uh, really huge advantage is that here we have a W I I appearing. So which gives us some, some term which controls derivatives. So from at that stage we can then say, well, at a certain point we need to uh, apply the integration by parts formula to get the di to this wik, which is then a derivative on the wik, which can be controlled, but a card it cannot be controlled by a wii. So this means maybe we take all the possible combinations of IKs, write down all the parabolic estimates for that, and then we can control derivatives of this WIK by taking the corresponding equation for the WIK. And so we have a closed system of parabolic equations, and uh, still I want to explain you how the um, integrability condition on a drift enters. So now we uh, now, now this is my, my word, more or less. Now we can have a parabolic equation. We use a nice test function, which is now the uh, function wii, and then get parabolic estimates. So um, there is one is the derivative of wii squared. So this will appear, and we will have some gradient of wii bounded in L2, L2. So this is the nice things. Um, and then this one here will be controlled by that term, and here we have to use integration by parts. So, but let's first look at um, this term, uh, drift times w, which will appear after testing this one with the function wii. And now there is only some condition on the drift B, some integrability condition. But we know that there will be a derivative of this function W. And so we use the scalar Nierenberg interpolation inequality, which tells us, so we gain some integrability because one of the two functions here belongs to uh, a solar space, and this is this DW. And then the uh, uh, second term is exactly in this uh, B is an LP, with some exponent, which is 2p over p minus t, and here it also is p minus t appears, or if you divide by p, this will be, uh, so if you take the opposite one, then you exactly see the condition. Let's formulate it that way. And we also have only the dw in L2, which will be here in that term, and we have the w in L2, which comes from the second term. Cool. And now, uh, to, to conclude, so if now this q is above this limit, then we have control over that term. This is exactly the condition that we need. So which gives us back the condition uh, the, of Ladyshevskaya Budi serie. And um, then we take only the outcome from that part here, which is the L2 norm, the supremum in time over the L2 norm in space and we sum over all of that. Why do we do this? And then this is bounded by the rest terms, and here is something like the gradient of the expectation is bounded. But the gradient of the expectation doesn't, doesn't help with anything, because the expectation is something which is regular by taking the expectation, so there is a gradient of that, so we do not win anything on the process. But we could use it for um, take, getting control on, on such terms here. And so we have here the supreme of the L2 norms of WII, and this, by definition, was the expectation over the derivative squared. And now we know that this one here is finite. So then we want to change now the expectation with the integral here. So we just throw away that 2. And this is exactly where we lose the, the factor of 2 in the um, conservation of regularity. Why we couldn't go from W12 to W12? Because we were using 
uh, losing somehow this factor of two. So once, so we, if we know that one, then we also know that we have finiteness. If there is no factor of two, then we can take the expectation on its side, and so we know that the expected value of the L2 integral of the derivative is bounded. And so we have our result, our regularization result. And so this is basically the strategy of proof, so which should somehow explain how this integrability condition enters. So this is somehow the, the optimal result, and it's also exactly at that point where you see that you can go up to the limit case, so that you are not restricted to the Kuhl of Wagner condition, but you can go up to the limit. And um, maybe to conclude, I still have like five minutes. Um, I still want to, to explain you how this first strategy of proving uniqueness by the duality formula now m might, so informally, um, give you also some uniqueness result in that setting. So that you do not only have the restoration by regularity, but as a consequence, also the restoration of well posted for the stochastic transport equation and what the natural conditions then should be. So this is the uh, last slide here. So I explained you the duality approach in the deterministic setting. Now we look at the stochastic um, setting, even if like it's cheated, what I wrote down here. Um, but let's say we look at two stochastic equations, which is one the stochastic transport equation that was <coughs> studied so far. Now we go to the stochastic continuity equation, where the first part is exactly the continuity uh, equation. And we also have the same stochastic um, contribution here, but with dv instead of du. Um, now they are in duality correspondence, and so rigorously speaking you would need to, so the one equation you are interested in is studied in the forward way, the, <coughs> the dual equation is studied backwards, which fits in the finite condition, so instead of using the same Brownian motion you would uh, use the backward Brownian motion going back. So this would be more the rigorous uh, uh, word, but still they are in uh, correspondence. And now what I explained to you, so if the solution of the stochastic transport equation is regular enough that it can be used for testing for the stochastic transport equation, and if you, you do it in, uh, with uh, final values in a su sufficiently large, large space, then you would get uniqueness of solution for the tra stochastic transport equation. In the opposite direction, if you look at the stochastic transport equation and the solution of the stochastic transport equation is sufficiently regular um, for testing in the stochastic continuity equation, then you would get uniqueness for the stochastic continuity equation. So you always need regularity of the opposite equation. So in that sense, now you can expect two types of uniqueness results. So the first is um, we want to have some uniqueness result for the stochastic transport equation, so for the first one. So then we need regularity for the second one. Regularity for the second one asks for um, this integrability condition on the drift or on the prefactors what is written in front of the solution. So we need this LP, LQ, or LQ, LP integrability condition both for the B but also for the divergence of B. Because now this is the lower order term. So if B and the divergence of B satisfy this Lachenskaya Bodicelin condition, then we know that the solutions to the stochastic continuity equation are weakly differentiable. And so they can be used for testing, and so we get the uniqueness result for the stochastic transport equation. So this is the first result, and this would lead to some class by class uniqueness. Uh, in the opposite direction, if you, we want to have stochastic well uh, posted for the stochastic uh, continuity equation, we uh, need that B belongs to the Ladyshensky Pudisirin uh, class, and then we have regularity of all solutions from the stochastic transport equation, and this in turn gives by the uh, duality approach this uniqueness for uh, the stochastic continuity equation. So this is then the extension of this deterministic uh, duality approach, this stochastic setting, and how this uh, first regularization result is used in the uh, in the stochastic case, and that also does not work in the stochastic case, just because for uh, only this integrability condition we do not have regularity of solutions, so this cannot be applied. Okay, so I think that's everything I wanted to tell you. So thanks a lot for your attention.
questions? Yes. Uh, instead of uh, looking at the I squared or the I I, I don't know uh, the notation. Yeah. It was W I I. Could, could you, for instance, uh, look at the V I V K V L? Uh, yes. Uh, let's say for uh, <coughs> for having better uh, higher moments. Yes, yeah, exactly. So this is um, this is only the first step. So so one is I want to look at something which appears twice because then there is no cancellation effect. If you would take, for example, here. If you have some result that the expectation of di u dk u, but this one is regular, then you do not know. There are somehow signs appearing. And by taking twice in the sign direction, I take actually the modulus of something. And this allows to prove everything. So if you, um, but, but you're correct, if, if you prove w1r regularity or in higher or w1m, whatever I call it, um, then you would look at combinations which are v with an index 10, 10 times i, for example. And then there would be the du to the power 10, which would need, because there is a 2, two which would need that the um, initial values are in w120. So this is the factor 10 that you, that you use. But to get the higher moment, so to, to get the intersection of all circular spaces, you repeat all the strategy, and you actually apl apply it to, um, let's say, n, the product of n um, <coughs> derivatives. But it is possible. Yes. It always keeps the same. Oops. Why is it not on that? Oh. It always keeps somehow the stra same structure here. Because you just use the derivative of a uh, product. Thank you. So uh, um, I didn't understand the, for the regularity of the in the, your last uh, slide, <coughs> you um, you said that you have to use the duality, so the continuity equation, the stochastic continuity equation. Yes. And uh, you are proving the weak differentiability only of the of v. Yes. But uh, in order to make sense of the stochastic integral in this uh, for the Stratonovich, uh, what, uh, what do you need? You need something a little bit more, no? Because no, because how I wrote it down. Uh, uh, wait. No, so how I wrote it down <coughs> here, the derivative here acts only in the test function. This is why I used here the integrating my parts. So here is only the u, and then here is the derivative of the phi, which would be the solution of the dual equation, which has enough regularity. But uh, to make sense of the Stratonovic, since in your, if you look at the, the continuity equation, your last equation, yeah, so you need a little bit more than uh, so here. If you, yeah. But so, but here, so for example, in the first case, we, we have exactly this regularity. So, so we be, we can we can write the Stratonovic integral as we want because we have um, so so this. So if we do not have the regularity for the v, then we can just <coughs> use the integration by parts formula to have the d acting on the uh, on the test function. Oh, 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 of and so, so, so this term is not, not a problem. Okay. So if v is independent on time, yes, then you cannot. It seems that you cannot take v which is in L of the dimension. In L, e with p is equal to the dimension. Am I correct? Um, yes, this was the. It means that so this is this be, here. So so. Um, no, it, it means that you should be able to take q equal to infinity. This is the question. It's, it, but it's not. You say it's not depending on time. Yes. Then yes. it's the p, and then we can take p is equal to infinity. Yes, I would like to say if you can take q equal to infinity in this, in order that if b is independent of time, you take b which is in a fever, p is equal to d to the dimension. This is uh, the I think you're in the mixing no. p and q. No, no, no. no. It's a so, so, wait, so if b does I'm not depend you, on time. I'm asking if you can take q equal to infinity in your condition. Um, we can so so this is the opposite case. So we can take um, q is equal to infinity with some with some um, smallest condition, or we can take um, that it's uh, continuous here. That's uh, mapping continuously. Uh, so instead of e infinity, then we can get everything because then somehow this continuity so makes, makes it precise that we have this. 
Yeah. Yeah. Depending on time, yeah. Which is in it. This is this is the second um, limit case, which is a little bit more more complicated. So that that was why I was dropping that one. I don't know, but there is some points in D, 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 D needs to be larger than 3 yeah. in that case, because otherwise the Gagliano, <coughs> in that case, D is, is larger or equal to 3. Because then to apply this Gagliano and back um, argument. So, so we, we can do the opposite case with Q's, so if this LQ is replaced by the space of continuous function, but we need a restriction that D is larger or equal to 3. And smallness, smallness, or not? So in that case, it's not the smallest. If we um, have L infinity, then there would be a smallest condition. Can be larger than three, or there is no restriction? Um, I think in both cases there was um, D larger or equal to three because it depends on the, the there is a specific Galliardian back uh, type inequality in that case. Other question? Yes. What? What sort of conditions do you need to want to So you mean like long, long time behavior? So it was all depending on t. So, so I guess for a fixed t, you can do it, do it always. Um, but I, I'm not sure if that this condition here will still. I haven't, I haven't thought about that. Okay, if there are no other questions, I think we tend to leave this one.